the metaphysical tools of awareness. So what are the metaphysical tools of awareness? The metaphysical tools of awareness are called intent and will. These are not just abstract concepts of some mere human emotion. These are actual metaphysical tools. You may be vaguely familiar with these tools from your nighttime dreams. Intent and will are what you use to purposefully fly in a dream. It's not thought that propels you. It's the intent and will that moves a dream persona. Thinking isn't what bends the spoon either. This is an action performed through intent and will. Doing something physically is approaching reality a bit literally and indicative of a loss of clarity. The more and more the mind goes over matter, the more and more physicality is not a necessity. Like why hire 20 men to move a Sisyphus stone uphill when I can simply levitate it there with my mind? Would that make any sense? The rock levitating certainly doesn't make any sense. And that's exactly it. Damn right it doesn't make any sense. If it did, then it wouldn't be allowed to happen, would it? This represents another major obstacle towards sharpening lucidity. The fact that the key towards moving the mind over matter isn't a matter of learning or education. Adding anything additional to the intellectual profile isn't going to bring the epiphany. Sorry about that. Enlightenment never happens in the laboratory or the classroom. Emptying is what increases the potency of potentiality. It is what you unlearn that removes obstructions. And no, it's no coincidence that the word potent is in the word potentiality. Just think of the crypto-semantic implications of that. We must make an effort to make use of the virtually untouched instrumentations of will and intent. And no, it's not discovered through the power of positive thinking or the unrelenting perseverance of faithful belief. Will and intent are applied aspects, unlike belief, which is something one must do if asked to accept something that cannot be experienced. A belief is just a story in one's head. Intent and will are tools of awareness. Intent is the ability to focus the imagination on something. And the will is the power that facilitates its manifestation, directly manipulating and influencing appearances and arrangements of content to bend towards whatever purposes the practitioner has determined. So pragmatically employed, intent could be described as visualization. It must be clarified that this isn't a matter of the narrating chatter in your head. Thinking can only interfere with the process and send the subconscious mixed messages, which will bring mixed effects. For the best use of intent, 
Pure visualization, free from thought, is what most fosters results in accord with the intention. Now will, which is sometimes referred to as willpower, is a disciplined way of conducting oneself which is conducive towards carrying out the intent. Will is what keeps you on the chosen path and harnesses the physicality. Often, intentions cannot be realized because the will is weak, and therefore one cannot master the physical demands of the biology, and hence intentions wane and eventually lose their focus. The subconscious mind, the agency responsible for manifestation, cannot do its job effectively, if at all. When there is weak willpower, an over-demanding consciousness that is a slave to its impulses and desires. Like I've said before, Master the body and the brain, or the body and the brain will master you. This means striving towards impeccability, the pure Zen mind, which comes about by way of mindfulness and gaining meta-awareness of your persona. Mastering the physicality doesn't mean that the impulses and feelings of the biology and physiology go away. Only how one reacts to them changes. One may reach a level where they stay calm 100% of the time. But that doesn't mean anything intrinsic to the human persona has been removed. We can greatly tame and curtail the impulses and feelings by maintaining the Zen mind. But these impulses and feelings don't ever go away. So there's no way to master desire by avoidance. You have to confront desire head on and command it. You can start by trying experiments with it in small ways. Whenever irresistible urges arise, or when overpowering emotions, feelings, and sensations flood your system, don't express, don't repress. Just allow it to be present and then it will fade away. You don't have to feel the need to fuel it. Don't give it any fuel and it will have to fade. This is a progressive gateway towards putting the mind over matter. A great thing to practice with is physical pain. The next time you stub your toe on the bedpost, instead of screaming and cursing and throwing things around in visceral expression, sit down, close your eyes, breathe, and just examine the sensation. Let it be. Stay calm. It will go away. After some practice with this, you begin to realize that pain wasn't all what you made it out to be. Pain doesn't have to be avoided. Pain can even be enjoyed, because pleasure and pain are merely different degrees of the same thing. Same goes with being horny, or embarrassed, or sad, or hyperactive, or grappling with intense cravings, or any other provocative lure of the persona. You don't have to give in to it. 
Allow it to rise and pass away. This is the way to master the physicality, which increases the strength and potency of willpower. Don't make the mistake of trying to accomplish this with thoughts. Thought is the persona's tool of serving its own desire, the exact opposite of what needs to be accomplished here. Intent and will trump thoughts. Thoughts will only try to psych you out and drag the mind back under the matter. And that's what's happening most of the time in your day-to-day -day reality. A prolonged series of psych-outs attempting to keep you tied up in distractions. Rule of thumb. Any inventory content that directs your attention towards external phenomena is an appearance you should be wary of. Any inventory content that directs your attention towards the source of attention can be considered to be a great friend. Fate will be in charge of your existence until you recognize and take responsibility for reality. Responsibility? Does that mean it's my fault? Never mind fault. The idea of fault is inconsequential and isn't even a factor that ever comes up in these explorations. Unless except maybe when it pertains to those who give up or don't even bother trying. But by taking responsibility, it's assumed that whatever it is that is associated with your condition is completely in your hands. A reality wherein you are the only origin and foundation is completely within your charge. Illusion tests for attachments. That's its job. It only relents when it's seen that a Zen mind has become unshakable. When a Zen mind has become unshakable, the mind moves over matter. Then it can be known empirically that physicality is really just a mental state. And as such, the rock can float. Just intend and will it to happen. For there really isn't any rock. The existential agency realizing this for itself is crucial. Words are only good for pointing towards that realization.